If you're having issues with your stream, click on Click Here to Refresh Stream under the video player to view our alternate stream. If you're having any technical issues, click on the Help button on the lower right corner of the webcast page. Your help request will be emailed back to the email address you provided. To ask a question, simply click on the Questions tab and click on the Questions button. A new window will open to type in your questions. The moderator will receive the questions. You may ask a question at any time during the webcast. Thank you and enjoy the program! Folks, and welcome to our 2021 Ontario Blind Sports Association Virtual Hall of Fame Gala. On behalf of the staff and board of OBSA, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Though this has been a challenging 20 months or so on many fronts, I believe OBSA has weathered the storm fairly well. And this is largely due to the fact that the hard work and dedication of our staff Rhonda Gohari, Richard Amillard, and our amazing board of directors, Barbara Pleitis, Janice Dawson, Brian Arthur, Jason Dunkerley, and Kyle Pelly. Through all their hard work and dedication that we've been able to still deliver virtual programs and, as I like to say, keep the lights on. A special thanks also to our members because this really is a member-driven organization and without their uptake of the virtual programming and staying connected, we certainly wouldn't be in the positive position we are today. Our annual Hall of Fame Gala is held each November where we induct athletes, coaches and builders into our Hall of Fame and we celebrate our current members, supporters, and volunteers. And though we're only able to do it virtually this year, I hope this year's class of inductees and all those we're celebrating, I hope they certainly uh, feel the appreciation over the airwaves, as it were, and that know that we're already planning our 2022 in-person celebration next year to be bigger and better than ever. Ontario Blind Sports Association has a very strong and rich history of delivering sport programming and supporting members and athletes since its inception in 1984. As I've mentioned, this is an evening of celebration and recognition. And to that point, I'd like to bring a moment of focus and uh, really admiration to the forefront in recognizing one of our founding members, Shirley Shelby, who we lost this past August. Shirley had the opportunity to observe blind sport back in the late 70s through her position as a travel agent and volunteering for some games. And she recognized the importance of helping to build the organization and along with some of uh, her close colleagues, Ontario Blind Sports Association was born. Shirley, we thank you for all you have delivered over the years and all that you continue to give right till the end. And I ask everybody to join us in a moment of silence as we recognize and remember Shirley and as we prepare to carry on her work and her dream in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Thank you, Shirley, again for all you've done. 
though we'll miss you, know that you're in our hearts and minds as we move forward. When I run track, I run with the guide, and he's basically helping me stay in my lane and get me to the finish line. The guide himself will be talking to me throughout the whole race. He would say four strides to the turn, and then I would have to take four strides and then turn. And then when we are off the turn, he would say home straight. So then that means I have to pick up and run from there, basically. So maintaining my speed and also staying in my lane at the same time. I won a couple me medals at Parasport for um, 100 meter, 200 meter, and long jump. There's a bit of more of a barrier because of the fact that we may have an impairment, but other than that, it's basically the same thing. As the teachers and coaches needs to really listen to us and what we have to say about ourselves before they judge us. A reminder that tickets are still available for the 50-50 draw. To purchase tickets, e-transfer Rhonda at blindsports.on.ca. A ticket is $20. Thank you to this year's sponsors. Silver Level, AMI, Accessible Media Inc., and Bronze Level, the Canadian Foundation for Physically Disabled Persons, CFPDP. Thank you also to our supporters, the Canadian Helen Keller Centre and Achilles Canada. I really get a lot of those swimming. It's a form of a sport where I don't have to rely on someone to guide me. I can just get in the water and feel completely independent and free. Blind competitive swimming is just like regular swimming, except for three modifications. I have a tapper, so basically I'll get tapped on the shoulder so I know it's time to turn. I'm allowed to brush my hand along the lane rope every few strokes so I know I'm going straight. So I have to wear blacked out goggles. That's because there are three categories of blind swimmers. Basically makes it a level playing field. It's something that I'm good at and I feel completely free. I'm in that pool, just swimming straight ahead and going for it. The Gord Hope Award is awarded once a year to one individual and is presented at the OBSA Hall of Fame Gala. The individual being awarded this honor has to possess the following attributes. Dedication to his or her chosen sport. Dedication to his or her training. Demonstrate great sportsmanship on and off the field of play. A positive role model to those around them. Perseverance through adversity brought on by a personal challenge. This year, the award is presented to Chantal Simard, the founder of the Sudbury Goalball Club. Chantal graduated from social services program at Northern College in 1996 and in gerontology in 1998 in Sudbury. She then moved to Brantford in 1999 to specialize and graduate as an orientation and mobility specialist. She started immediately at the CNIB office in Sudbury and has been there for over 20 years. Chantal was introduced to the game of goalball in 2012. She fell in love with the idea and decided to organize a team in 2013, after which she founded the Sudbury Goalball Club. Chantal travels weekly from Hamner to Sudbury, a 45-minute drive. Even if only one player shows up for practice, that is dedication. She works extremely hard to expand her knowledge and her skills as a coach. Chantal traveled to the Para Pan Am Games in Toronto in 2015 to volunteer for goalball as a goal coach on the court. Chantal also coached a girls team in Halifax in 2017. They took silver. Chantal coached several teams other than her own at the Durham Regional 2019 Ontario Parasports Games. She also accompanied players from the juniors in Halifax. They came back with gold and silver. 
Chantal likes to promote the sport of goalball every chance she gets. She does work at Lake Joe during camp abilities, introducing and promoting goalball, and also gives presentations at schools. Chantal wants to get more athletes interested in the sport. Chantal believes in inclusion. She introduces the sport to as many students and people as she can so they can play and appreciate the sport. Chantal's volunteerism goes as far as organizing a get-together with all the athletes and their families. It is a joyous event, where families play goalball and enjoy all the activities and fellowship. Parents, brothers and sisters are introduced to the game and see for themselves how challenging the game is. What drives Chantal? She believes that the sport of goalball promotes self-esteem, connects with other players, and helps the athletes learn a sport that both visually impaired and sighted individuals can play and excel at. Great friendships are born every year. Chantal is dedicated to the sport, is patient, passionate, and kind. Chantal is a talented coach, generous of her time, and has a heart of gold. Chantal's goal is to have the sport of goalball to be as inclusive as possible. Chantal, thank you for all that you do to further the sport of goalball, for increasing the reach of OBSA, and for your care for other people. Congratulations on receiving the 2021 Gord Hope Award! Hello, my name is Chantal Samard. I'm a volunteer goalball coach for the Sudbury Goalball League. Um, I am truly honoured to have been nominated for the Gord Hope Award, so I want to say thank you so much. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Uh, so my story here is, uh, 12 years ago, OBSA came to Sudbury to introduce a the sport of goalball to uh, the children and also to the families. So. Uh, as I was watching the, the children learn and practice certain skills, not only did I notice smiles, laughter, excitement, but also the, the whole family was able to participate and nobody was left out. So once they learned the skills, um, a court was marked, they were pretty anxious to play against their family members. You should have seen the children having a great time and actually winning their games. <laughs> No surprise there. So my whole reason for starting a club in Sudbury is because of what I saw that day. Living in Northern Ontario, um, there are not that many adaptive sports 12 years ago, and I wanted to give the children in this area an opportunity and a league of their own actually. So I thought this would give them a place to come together, feel part of the group, um, feel uh, a safe environment, create friendships, and also uh, for some, it'd be the first time meeting other people with vision loss. So every year, um, I've witnessed each athlete achieve something uh, they have been working on or something they, they don't even know themselves. So whether they have become more fit, uh, a better athlete, gain friendships, uh, but most of all, what I've noticed is uh, change in their self-esteem. Um, they tend to hold themselves uh, differently, more confident, a sense of worth. Our club is based on a positive envir environment where you can work on your goals as a recreational athlete or to become a, an elite athlete. So throughout the years, I've spread the word of goalball in Northern Ontario by presenting the sport of goalball to as many schools as I can, um, which resulted in school leagues. So they would have uh, practice every lunch hour and then have little mini tournaments uh, halfway through and then and it, at the end of the year they would have their own tournament as well. Um, I also had the opportunity to volunteer at the Pair Pen M Games in 2015. I came back with a different model. Um, now when somebody tells me I can't, I ask them, is it because you don't want to try or are you afraid? I believe you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Uh, during the Pair Pen M Games, I've witnessed incredible athletes 
uh, with different abilities. And let me tell you that if I hadn't witnessed it myself, I probably wouldn't have believed it. So now I know and believe that it starts with one person to say, let me show you how. It takes time, dedication, patience, and believing in each athlete when they don't even believe in themselves. Uh, give people the opportunity and allow them to make mistakes and learn from them. So I am very proud to be able to have had the opportunity to meet many wonderful athletes, uh, talented athletes, coaches, referees, and family members. So it's, like I said, it starts with one person, believe you can achieve. Thank you. Judo is uh, the perfect sport to be adapted for the visually impaired and totally blind. The main difference is you start with grips. In blind judo and able-bodied judo you don't. And once a grip is broken in blind judo, uh, the referee will stop the fight and call both people back to the center. I've been in judo for 20 years. I like the discipline. I like the confidence that it gives me. I started off in wrestling and from there on I tr transferred over to judo and it, it really teaches you a lot of self-discipline, it builds character. I like the competitiveness, the challenge of always trying, there's always something new to learn. I just go out there and fight, that's all I do. I do my best to listen to my coach and uh, follow instructions and do my best strategically uh, for winning each fight. A reminder that tickets are still available for the 50-50 draw. To purchase tickets, e-transfer Rhonda at blindsports.on.ca. A ticket is $20. Thank you to this year's sponsors. Silver Level, AMI, Accessible Media Inc., and Bronze Level, the Canadian Foundation for Physically Disabled Persons, CFPDP. Thank you also to our supporters, the Canadian Helen Keller Center and Achilles Canada. Good job. In blind powerlifting, it's the exact same as able body powerlifting, except for the fact that the coach is allowed to assist the lifter onto the platform and to have them set themselves up. In some ways, it's no different than working with an able, than working with an able body lifter, and in some ways, it's, it's totally different. You have to do a lot of hand over hand, a lot of demon, you can't just do a demonstration where you say, oh, watch me squat, this is how you squat. You actually have to manipulate their body sometimes into the positions. When you squat, you focus on a, a point in the sky, normally to keep your head up, to keep your shoulders back, keep your back up. A blind lifter can't look into the sky, so they have to uh, focus in their brain on a squat higher than themselves. Uh, I've been working with Sheldon since 95 and he uh, really helps me out with the technique and, and make sure I'm doing the lifts right and properly and safely and all that. The best part is when you're done the workout and you've had personal bests and like oh. it makes you feel good that you, you accomplished more than you did last day you were in the gym. Powerlifting isn't for everyone. Powerlifting um, is a very dangerous sport. However, if you learn the proper techniques, uh, become knowledgeable of the sport, surround yourself with other knowledgeable people, take your time and lift within your limits. It's a great sport that most people can enjoy for a lifetime. <laughs> One more. <laughs> this evening to be here to introduce our 2021 OBSA Hall of Fame inductee, Mick Ferris. Mick is being inducted this year as a coach and really a builder for all he's contributed to almost 40 years to the organization. Mick, I'm not trying to make you feel old with that 40 year reference. I was there in the early days as an athlete, so I've logged those years right alongside you, and I have so much to thank you for. 
uh, that I've learned and been able to benefit from. So many people have learned the same lessons, have contributed or benefited from your contributions in so many ways. I'm just fortunate to be able to be here tonight to express what I've been able to uh, gain from you and really speak for so many others. You've taught me so much in life and sport that I've been able to use intermingle one to the other. Some of the lessons include the person or the team that wants it more is the one that's likely going to win. That alone was such a huge lesson when I figured it out in my later teens. Uh, it, it enabled me to bring my sports to a new level, but then later in life, to be able to translate that to my career, to building family, to just being a contributing member of society. Uh, it, it just has paid so many dividends and you have your fingerprints all over that. And I'm confident that others would say the same. Um, I first got to know Mick through ice hockey. Uh, we would go out for our early morning skates, playing hockey, uh, next to the residence where Mick was working and sleeping. And we likely woke him from the banging around of the tin can that we used for a puck. And uh, he probably thought, might as well go out and join him since I can't sleep. But uh, that's where we first saw how Mick wanted to positively contribute to others, how to help them to teach them what, uh, what it really means to be good people and to get the most out of whatever it is you're doing. Uh, another lesson again is you only get back what you give. And uh, you know, Mick has certainly lived that, but he's also helped impart that to so many people. And because of that, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people out there today contributing to society and have our leading very full lives because of what uh, they've learned from Mick Ferris. I was fortunate to be coached by Mick for several years through the 80s, early 90s. And then uh, Mick was able to help develop a bond or a bridge between the School for the Blind in Brantford and where he worked and the Ontario Blind Sports Association where it became a bit of a breeding ground of athletes to uh, transition to our organization. Through that, Mick was able to help build the organization year over year over year, both bringing members and knowing or helping to understand what it is those members need to be successful. Mick likes to quietly operate behind the scenes and just uh, understand how to help each individually in their own personal way. Uh, I know Mick, you're not really comfortable tonight being celebrated, if you will. So I thank you for allowing us to, to take this opportunity because there's a lot of people who wanted to see this happen and want to celebrate you tonight. So we all, on behalf of everybody, we want to thank you for accepting and uh, indulging us, if you will, to, uh, to accept this moment. Mick, you again, you've contributed so much. Uh, this is not a end of the road in any way, shape or form. We're still looking to you to continue your hard work, your dedication. And we look forward to so many more years of uh, what you bring to the table and what you contribute to people in general. Again, thank you for all you've done, all you do. And uh, we look forward to continuing working together with you. Wishing you all the best and again, congratulations. Hey, Mr. Ferris, I just wanted to say congratulations. You've earned this and you deserve it. And thank you for everything you've done for me through blind sports. You're a great coach and a great mentor and nobody deserves this more than you. Congratulations, Mick. I don't know anyone who has been or continues to be 
more dedicated to developing the sport of goalball in Ontario, the Mick. Congratulations on the induction and recognition. Hey Mickey, when it comes to OBSA volunteers, you have set the bar incredibly high. Your commitment to blind sports in this province and specifically goalball has been nothing short of remarkable. I think in our almost 30 year relationship, there is a long laundry list of things that you have taught me. Some of those things have even been applicable to sport. Um, I think first on that list is that no two athletes are the same. There are no cookie cutter approaches to motivating athletes. A good coach works hard to see what best suits each athlete. So for that, I, and really any athlete that I have worked with since, owe you a debt of gratitude. So on this, your big day, I, as one inductee to another, Mick, would like to welcome you to the hall. This honor is long overdue. Congratulations. Around Ontario, if you want something done to support sports for youth who are blind or partially sighted, you ask Mick Ferris. You'll get it done. Congratulations, Mick, on your induction into the Hall of Fame. You've set the bar for myself and all future coaches to come uh, as far as hard work, determination, and stubbornness. Congrats, Mick. I know you like to be behind the scenes and not get recognized, but this is an award um, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame that is well deserved, so congrats. Mick. I want to thank you for your many years of service with Ontario Blind Sports. I enjoyed working with you on the board. For many years, you were a mentor, not just to myself, but many others. Congratulations, well deserved. Hey boss, it's Tracy. Congratulations on this award. It's truly deserved. Although I'm sure you're not thinking it is, because you don't like to be the center of attention, but truly, an honor to have worked with you, alongside of you, and with the Goldwell program throughout many years. It was a privilege to have Mr. Ferris as a team leader and soccer and goalball coach. He deserves the award because he's an outstanding man for the work he's done with the blind community. Mick, you've been a big part of many people's lives, both in regular life and in sporting life. We thank you, and this is very well deserved. Hey Mick, congratulations. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything that you've done. Um, you have been a major part in my success. So, huge congratulations. Hey there Ferris, congratulations on your induction into this year's Hall of Fame. A well-deserved honor for sure. I know you would never admit it, but you've had a huge impact on countless blind and visually impaired athletes over a career that has stretched decades now. With your work at the W. Ross McDonald School, you coached and helped run all of the sports programs. And of course, later on, you introduced young blind and visually impaired athletes to sports with the OBSA Sports Camp. A well-deserved honor. Congratulations, buddy. Hey, Mick, it, it's, uh, it, it's me, Sully, and, and uh, and Bowser Jr. and and, uh, and uh, I hope you have a a good retirement and uh, thank you for uh, doing all the sports camp. Thank you, Ferris. I'd like to begin by saying how humble and proud I am to being inducted into the OBSA Hall of Fame. I'd also like to congratulate the other inductees, both past and present. Throughout my years with OBSA, I've been fortunate to be surrounded by so many great athletes and coaches. And I'd like to take a moment to thank some of them. They include Jeff and Rob Christie, Rob Gaunt, Glenn Wade, Colleen Hare, Mike McElonen, John Baxter, Mike Brules, Bob Mannon, Tracy McPhee, and of course, Mr. Howe. All of these athletes and coaches were a big part of OBSA's beginnings and early successes. They set a standard of sporting excellence for our present coaches and athletes. I'd also like to mention how great it's been to see so many ex-athletes continue to give back to the organization after their athletic career was over by either becoming coaches or being involved with the administrative side of OBSA. 
It's amazing how far OBSA has advanced since we first became an association in the early 1980s. Back then, no one would have guessed that our athletes would have been eligible for athletic carding, or that you could turn on the TV and see highlights from the Paralympics involving our athletes. We even have ex-athletes now hosting their own podcasts. It was a personal decision for myself in delaying my induction. I wanted to make sure that when I did accept this honour, it would be at the right time and for the right reasons. Then I want to take a couple minutes to talk about Shirley Shelby. For those of you who have never had the opportunity to spend time with Shirley, she is the person who is most responsible for OBSA becoming the organization that it is today. In the early 80s, Shirley was the person who kept OBSA afloat financially and made us a viable sporting organization. Because of her leadership, business contacts, and a clear vision of what a sporting organization should be, people like myself, Mr. Howe, and others were able to concentrate on coaching and developing athletes. Besides keeping the organization's books in fiscal order, Shirley looked after all the behind the scene jobs. They included filling out the grant requests, booking transportation, using her contacts to supply uniforms for the athletes, and most important, attending countless meetings that I never wanted to be a part of. Also want to mention that while Shirley did this, she also took the time to run a successful travel agency and look after her family. No matter what ideas we came up with, such as the summer camps or starting up the junior nationals, Shirley never turned us down. If it was good for the athletes, she'd find a way to make it possible. Perhaps the most important thing Shirley did was when she was able to set up and organize and staff a full-time OBSA office. Shirley did a great job with her hirings when she hired Kyle and Craig, and then when they moved on, she was able to get us Rhonda and Richard. So finally, in conclusion, thank you again for allowing me to share some thoughts on Shirley. And thank you for again inducting me into the OBSA Hall of Fame. Pictures and videos of kids enjoying blind sports.
As we come close to the end of the gala, remember you can still purchase your 50-50 lottery tickets through e-transferring Rhonda Goharry at Rhonda at blindsports.on.ca. One ticket is $20. Don't forget to send along your name, email address, and phone number. Winners will be announced on social media and by email on November 30th. Congratulations to this year's recipients, and thank you to our sponsors, Silver Level, AMI, Accessible Media Inc., and Bronze Level, the Canadian Foundation for Physically Disabled Persons, CFPDP. Thank you also to our supporters, the Canadian Helen Keller Centre and Achilles Canada. We look forward to celebrating in person at the 2022 Hall of Fame Gala. Good night!